Golden State is back in December on the 4th, and that's a part of a brutal stretch that I do want to go through with you, David, after we've talked about the way this team needs to start in their first 12 games. Again, eight of those, 12 on the road, and you've got high-caliber opponents in Golden State, Cleveland, a uh, road game uh, at Toronto to end that opening stretch. Uh, if you just bump yourself down the calendar a little further, there's kind of hidden in this entire schedule of you know six, six and a half months is this stretch from November 20th to December 6th. And it took me a few times of going through the schedule, David, to realize that this might be one of the stickiest points of the schedule. Certainly we'll talk about the way the season ends, but here, uh, during a time of year where you're kind of through the excitement of the first part of the season, you haven't reached that excitement of the Christmas Day game and the stretch that is involved there in the NBA schedule. Here this stretch features home games against Oklahoma City, San Antonio, Minnesota, who's going to be very, very good, Golden State, and Denver. You also have road games in two back-to-backs at Phoenix, at Golden State, and then at Utah and at Portland. So from the, t- the 20th of November to the 6th of, de- of December, makes me a little weak in the knees, Mr. Wesley. Well, it is a, it is a tough stretch. And, it, you know, when you're, when you're looking at this schedule, every time you see a Western Conference team, you're thinking, you, you, you're not really thinking as much, that's a win, that's a win, that's a win. You're going to have to play good basketball. And then, and then it, a lot of that is Western Conference teams that, that are going to be important wins. And then you go out to a tough Toronto. I mean, you, you have a tough Toronto um, at the end of the, the stretch you were talking about before. Right. Um, yeah, this is this is not a whole lot of fun. You got Golden State again. You got uh, Denver at home. So, um, but every, every year, the schedule is going to have those stretches like that where you want to survive. You want to go out and, you know, almost 500 basketball is acceptable because – you have such a tough schedule, but these games are also spread out. You said it, back to back, then another back to back. Um, wow, three back to backs in the month of November, early December. Right. Uh, but back to backs aren't that big of a deal. Well, I, you know, true. I, you know, I think back to my my playing days when, you know, you didn't love them. You don't want a hundred of them, but you know, back to backs were just a part of what goes on. They've certainly lessened the back to backs uh, this year, so. Um, that's not that many. It's down to 13, as a matter of fact, with this new layout of the schedule. To give you some perspective, last year there were 17 back-to-backs for the Pelicans, 13 this year, including a couple of home back-to-backs, and that also helps, one of which comes uh, during the holidays. And, David, that back-to-back in late December is Dallas and the Knicks. That stretch also has a home game against the Brooklyn Nets. So no Christmas Day action for the New Orleans Pelicans, but for Pelicans fans... Um, that stretch between Christmas Day and New Year's Day, you find the team at home, and there's some attractive dates there during, I think, the school break, both collegiately and for the younger kids, too. That, that's an attractive part of the schedule for me. And I think it is, when you look at the caliber of opponents that the Pelicans will take uh, on during that stretch, it may just be what the doctor ordered after that brutal uh, late November, early December um, period that we talked about. Yeah, home home against Brooklyn and the back-to-back you talked about Dallas uh, and the Knicks, uh, then out to Utah. Uh, that could be a fun trip for us. Yes. Uh, and then Minnesota. Minnesota's going to be all right. So Minnesota's going to go from basically not even close to the playoff picture to now maybe even 5, 6, 7 seed yeah. based on the talent they brought in. Yeah. Can Tom Thibodeau's team make that kind of a jump? I believe they can. Uh, they're, they're, they've been growing and they've been learning, and, and uh, a healthy Minnesota team is going to be a tough out. Um, I think, you know, I don't know if, you know, five, uh, but certainly six or seven, they can make that jump and, and be in the playoffs and, and give themselves a chance. Um, but this is a stretch of the, the schedule where, like you said, uh, I see a lot of Eastern Conference teams. Um, there could be that might be where they need to make up some ground and 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 really kind of uh, get some momentum going into February. Okay, all right, that's kind of taking you through the first two and a half months of the schedule. Dave, we noted that Cleveland's here on October the 28th, Golden State's here on October the 20th, and then again on December the 4th. Those are the easy ones to circle as far as marquee home dates go. Sure. What would else? What else would be on that list for you? What other teams would you? 
would you say, hey, Pelicans fans, if you want to see something special, this is the game or this is the team you need to see when they come to town? I, I'd like to see Houston when they come to town. You know, Chris Paul coming back uh, to a place where he played, added to James Harden. Um, that'd be a, certainly a, a game that, that I'd want to see. Um, and, I, and I'm seeing that. That's ESPN game January 26th. Right. I know there's a time that they play here before that, I'm sure. Actually, they play a little bit later in March here in New Orleans. Ah. St. Patrick's Day. Okay. Yes. Um, so uh, that would probably be a game that I'd want to see. I'd want to see the old Boston team, too, uh, see what they can come back and do after winning the East. You yeah. Know, they, you don't talk much about them, but, you know, even if they don't win the East, they're second best team and their third best team. You know, so um, that's March 18th. Yeah, certainly that's got to be uh, uh, somebody I'd like to check out. Gordon uh, Hayward now in Boston. Yeah. Now I want to see I want to see that dynamic now. Oh man. That, yeah. That, yes. So think about that back to back. That's one of the home back to backs we talked about. Mm -hmm. Think about that weekend. If you're if you're a hoop head or a basketball junkie or however else you want to describe it, mm -hmm. there's that home back to back March 17th and March 18th. Houston here on a Saturday night, Boston here on Sunday. I don't know, you get a pop-up tent outside the Smoothie King Center, you just make a weekend of it. That's pretty incredible right there. I think it's funny I picked those two teams. I didn't know that was a part of the back-to-back. -back. Yeah, that's one of the home back-to-backs uh, coming in March. Um, ooh, that could be a tough week right well, there. It would be a really tough well, week. Tough two games because then you got Dallas and, 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 the, and the Lakers, again, not knowing what they're going to do. And then you got Houston again on the road. So... Um, even that March schedule could be kind of sticky. It could is. Be the tough. whole thing's going to be sticky. <laughs> yes, the whole is. thing's going to be sticky. Uh, any, before we move to kind of toward the end of the season, is there another team that you'd love to see, you know, just from a fan standpoint? You know, you, I think you did a good job there picking Houston and Boston. Anyone else out of that schedule? I'm Curious trying to help people build a good 12-game package here. I guess Curious what I'm getting to know, at. just for me, what Washington's going to do this year. You know, another team that's kind of been right there. You know, they, they have all the pieces, all the makeup, defense, offense, exciting players. What is Washington going to do this year? Can they move up? Can they uh, make their season uh, better than it was last year? I, you know, I, I thought they were going to uh, – I thought they were going to be a tougher out. You okay. know, I thought they would beat Boston. Of course, they'll be here during that month of March you talked about. Yeah. March the 9th. March is a good month. Yes. Very Check out good March. Month. There's no <laughs> doubt. Uh, that home game is, again, March the 9th against the Washington Wizards. David's picked out two Eastern Conference teams here, which only make the one visit uh, to the Crescent City. Uh, again, the Wizards on the 9th and uh, Boston on the 18th. Speaking of teams that you'll only see uh, one time, keep this in mind about the NBA schedule and especially specifically for the Pelicans. Eastern Conference teams, you play them twice, once at their place, once at your place. In the Western Conference, traditionally, or I guess in most cases is the better way to put this, you'll play those teams four times, two at their place, two at your place, with the exception of a handful of teams this season out of the Northwest Division. You'll only play uh, Oklahoma City three times. Uh, you'll play Denver three times. You'll only play the Lakers three times. They're in the Pacific. Uh, I'm forgetting one other team. But those are the teams that you'll have the unbalanced schedule against in the West this year. Utah, who is in the Northwest Division, you will play four times. So you'll see the Jazz here twice, and the Pelicans will play in Salt Lake City on two different occasions as well. Let's move toward the end of the season. Since we've got kind of David Wesley's marquee matchups, or at least, I guess, the highlighter games for him, mm -hmm. um, look, you hope that, that they take advantage of a February that we mentioned might be a little softer than others. Maybe you've uh, done a good job of surviving the sticky stretches late November, early December, and then the middle of March, as you described. You're hoping you've taken care of business so that it's not all the chips on the middle of the table uh, for the two weeks in April. Because for the Pelicans, the month of April features six games, and they'll finish the year with home matchups against the Oklahoma City Thunder and then the Memphis Grizzlies in a nationally televised game on April the 4th. Then you go out west. It, it'll be interesting to see where Phoenix is at that point. It's a tough place to play, but that starts a road back-to-back -back at Phoenix, then at Golden State. Thank you. Travel down the coast to Los Angeles, take on the Clippers, whom we don't know a whole lot about at this point, other than Blake Griffin is still there. Right. But they lose Chris Paul and J.J. Redick. Um, 
isn't Gallinari now with the Clippers? But yet we don't know what his health yeah, is. Yeah, it's right, so right. far away. That is, I mean, we're talking April. 